Hey everybody and welcome to my uh, first impressions of the Dune Titan S which uh, Hi-Fi Go has provided for me to unbox and review for all of you. So for the overall tonality, it has a very big and bold sound which is very fitting for its namesake which is a Titan. It definitely follows that Harman target but with some modifications here and there that separates it with its similarly tuned peers. So overall, it has a very neutral, bright tonality with a big and extended sub bass that will fit most genres you listen to. It has some tendencies to be sibilant and slightly harsh in the treble frequencies but can be shrugged off especially if you aren't treble sensitive. So the Titan S is probably one of the most cohesive and complete tunings that I have heard in the sub $100 category. And it for me, it definitely beats all versions of the Moondrop Aria and the Tin Hi-Fi T3 Plus in my sub deck, ch subjective view. So for the bass, it's massive and very flexible. The bass frequencies on the Titan S is definitely my favorite bass execution in the price range it comes at. The bass has ample punch with a lot of body backing up each hit. It retains the cleanliness and accuracy that neutral tuned IEMs have. My favorite part is surely how boldly extended the bass is at the deepest depths of the sub bass region. Provides much of the much needed rumble, especially in rap or hip hop songs. Attack and decay is fast and has a surgical accuracy to it, but it avoids the stereotypes associated with that bass presentation by having just a massive presence to it. Although very flexible in whatever genre you throw at it, its potential is further unlocked in more modern production as it utilizes the sub bass region more than older releases. So especially this is especially tangible in songs that use the 808 kicks which really brings out that uh, uh, very big and bassy rumble in every hit. So a huge part of the success of the bass presentation in the Titan S is how the rest of the frequencies are tuned. The neutral bright tonality it presents causes the bass to be properly rendered without it being too muddy or overly rich in the lower mid range. So, uh, segueing to the next region, which is the mid range. So, the mid range is the region where I feel it took the most from the Harman target. This is also the area where its definitive rivals, the Mundrap Aria and the Tin Hi Fi T3 Plus, also sounds very similar in, resulting in a draw between all of them. Following how Harman IEMs tend to sound like, midrange is presented in a very clean and ample manner, yet lacks richness and body to it to really raise vocals and instruments to the next level. Both male and female vocals are presented in a clear and honest manner, yet lacks that extra oomph for them to really sing, especially in vocal harmonies. Same can be said with every instrument, resulting in an extra layer of airiness. Neutral lovers might love this overall mid-range presentation that lurks in the veins of tunings like Moondrop's VDSF or any clinical tuned IEMs, but I would prefer more mid-range richness and density than what the Titan S offers. For the treble, the treble is where the true point of contention lies. Depending on what song or genre or production you're listening to, the treble presentation might get a bit too hot for treble sensitives. It definitely focuses more on shimmer rather than body. It has some peaks that can cause sibilance and harshness, especially in production that has brighter or more pronounced symbols than usual. Its brighter presentation results in a better extended treble that kills off a great amount of air. So that means better air equals improved technicalities and better presentation of performance nuances such as snare ghost notes, uh, subtle vocal inflections, guitar pick attack, and others. Up, it's up to the potential listener if he or she prefers a brighter over a signature or does not. The Titan S definitely caters to the earlier set of people. So finally, for the sound search and imaging, the combination of harmonized mid-range and well-extended treble results in a big sound stage. It gets bigger with a set of Dunus SNS tips, which I have installed over here, as you can see. So I think uh, the uh, SNS means uh, studio and stage uh, as for Dunus uh, box that uh, Hi-Fi Go has um, graciously provided for me as a companion for the Titan S. So Aria, which is uh, I think uh, the Duno Titan S uh, as his uh, major rival, uh, soundstage is bigger uh, subjectively. So for me, 
as I've tried the area before. Yet, Titan S is cohesive while being adequately spacious. So, imaging is top-notch perform and performs as what's expected of the price. One can clearly pick out instruments and perceive panning techniques without breaking any sweat. So yeah, that's my uh, pre- first impressions of the Duno Titan S and I would like to give thanks to Hi-Fi Go for sending me one of these beauty chairs, which is the black version of the Duno, which really uh, is beautiful on hand with that uh, rocky and matte black texture with the red uh, highlighting over it. So I hope you like this first impressions and my, the full review will be up soon on my Facebook and uh, Head5 page. Oh uh, yeah, and go, as always, Goji out.